In today's video, it's really going to be a short documentary that I put together. I was invited by the Center on Halstead to their Southside Hub location, Center on Cottage Grove. And so the reason behind them creating the center was they realized that a lot of folks couldn't get access to the north side from the south side when it came to testing and other programming that they offer. So they created this at the beginning of when the monkeypox outbreak and vaccination started taking place. We're going to be checking out some of the interviews with key folks who are involved with the center, um, a little bit of the open mic highlights, and I'll show you a bit of the center. So I hope you enjoy what you're about to see. Check it out. And the first group um, that we had, and, uh, you know, they they the singers did their portraits. Um, there was there was one guy who uh, took trash and made uh, and made a beautiful butterfly um, out of it. And um, and this, you know, a little bit of the comic books where he was. Um, this is uh, Arthur Banks. Uh, also known as Artie McFly, yeah. and uh, what he wanted to do was to take uh, black figures, black um, heroes, um, and actually put them in uh, like DC or Marvel um, suits and characters who were popular. As you can see, um, Superman is um, Michael B. Jordan, yeah. and. Uh, LL Cool J. Cool J is uh, Luke Cage here. Um, That's awesome. We have, I just uh, realized that. <laughs> yeah. As you look down, you know, it's like, oh, okay. Um, over here, well, everyone knows Shona. He's just a really popular cool um, character um, from, from The Last Dragon. Wow. Um, up here is, um, is uh, Tupac as mm -hmm. Bishop. This is my favorite one. Could you imagine if Richard Pryor really was Spider-Man? <laughs> oh my God! It would it would be the funniest yet action-packed movie probably ever. Hi, I'm Betty Akins. I'm the manager of Getting to Zero project here at uh, Center on Cottage Grove. The purpose that we have this uh, satellite program from Center on Halstead is to address the problems and the stigma that we have uh, on the south side of Chicago with HIV. That's one of the things that we do here. Um, another thing is also being a community center. Uh, we enjoy inviting the community in to be a think tank, uh, to have um, poetry uh, like we're having tonight, um, to have just informational um, exchanges just so that we can be a part of the community and also as you see behind me uh, we're a gallery too um, and what we're trying to do is that we are trying to have the BIPOC LGBTQ community um, express themselves and have that expression go out into the community so that uh, they know that we're here we they know that um, the community understands that we have a positive impact uh, on the south side of Chicago and so the shame and the stigma uh, just uh, wouldn't be there anymore. Set the tone and create the space, um, open it up for anyone who feels comfortable. It does not have to be your work, um, it can be something you find online, it can be anything, um, or I can just pass it off. So let's get started. In the flush of love's light, we dare be brave, and suddenly we see that love costs all we are and will ever be. Yet it is only love which sets us free. And that's Maya Angelou. 
Hi, I'm Brittany Terry. I'm the Senior Director of Diversity, Equity and Inclusion and Training Services at Center on Halstead. Tonight, we're hosting an event. Um, it's an open mic night in light of Juneteenth. And we wanted to give the space and the uh, platform to anyone who wanted it in amplifying their own voices. Um, so it's the event is called Celebrating Our Voices. Um, and it is anyone who wants to perform any type of art, spoken word, um, poetry recital. Um, so I got started in DEI and uh, based on my interests. So I went to grad school for sociology, um, started working at an advertising agency and worked in learning and development and diversity and inclusion there. Um, so that's where a lot of my foundation comes from. As I moved and um, received this position at Center, I am now running all of our internal and external programming along with all of our trainings um, our training services and so what that means and looks like is I am really responsible for our culture building initiatives at Center on Halstead especially for our employees but I also touch a lot of the community so in events like tonight our open mic night um, this is where I get my exposure to the community Hi, my name is Keith Butler and I work at the Center on Halstead as the Executive Assistant and I'm also on the Diversity Council. Um, being on the Diversity Council gives me the opportunity to work very closely with Brittany Terry, who is our Senior Director of DE&I. Um, this event tonight is really exciting because uh, we get to hear some voices from black and brown people who have given us some ideas of their life and what's going on lately in the news even. Um, I, too, am going to be one of the people reading from my own book, Little Black Gay Boy, and I'm excited to share the stories a little bit about my life. I'm not sure I slept much that night before, because I thought that in a few hours I would find the eyes on the man everyone said I looked like. There had been one day when I was a child that my mom and I ran into one of my father's brothers at the grocery store. I don't remember much about the man except hearing him say, hearing him ask my mom, if this was Joseph's boy. You've been working with the center for quite some time and even have gone through a transition within its executive leadership, uh, being an African-American person of color and being queer. Uh, what do you enjoy about having Center on Halstead, bridging the gap between the North side and the South side and creating the Center on Cottage Grove? How was that process when it came to creating the space for our South Side queer community? Well, I think um, what's so important to know is that so many people looked at the center on Halstead as the center for white people. Mm -hmm. And they thought it was only serving the white community. And most people don't know that a lot of our clients and a lot of our patrons who come through the doors of the center on Halstead are people of color and they come from the South Side. So the importance of the Center of Cottage Grove being here is that there now is a place where people can see people who look like them. But my being at the Center on Halstead also gives those people the opportunity that when they come through the doors of the Center on Halstead, that they see people who look like them as well. They have an opportunity to breathe and go, oh, there are people who look like me who also work here. So that knows I'm going to be taken care of. Awesome. And what are some of the programs here at Center on Cottage Grove that you guys offer since you had started this? Just with knowing the need that there's a lot of Southsiders that are queer and can't necessarily commute all the way to COH, but now that they have a hub that's part of COH, uh, what are the the types of services that you do well, one of the great things about center on cottage grove coming into being at the time that it did it came about right about the time when monkeypox happened and because um there were so many people who were not getting the tests that they needed on the south side and they were not knowing whether or not they contracted monkeypox or not they they felt they had to travel all the way to the north with center on cottage grove being here it made it very easy for them to come here and be right in their backyard and to be able to get the same services, the same tests, the same vaccinations that people were getting on the north side. And I think that's really, really important because there's no such thing as they're getting the services and there's something different here. It's the same services that's happening, but we're meeting people where they are. I wrote this poem because this morning I woke up and every day I you know, go to the bathroom in my little routine and I was looking at Apple News 
And the Supreme Court had the audacity, and I use that word very strongly, the audacity to denounce the affirmative action clause. Just let that sink in. That affects not just black people, that affects so many. Oh, yes. So when I seen it, it wasn't like, oh, this is a black problem. It was, this is an American problem. Mm -hmm. This is a civil rights problem. Mm -hmm. The title of my poem is, they keep telling me. They keep telling me that I'm free. Free blacks, free education. Freedom is desegregation. Freedom to marry, freedom to vote. Freedom to strap up in my army boots and kill in the name and the rights of the United States of America. Mm. Mm. They keep telling me to have hope, to have dreams and actions. They keep telling me to be open-minded, to forget. They keep telling me to self-care, to take vacations, work hard, work hard, work hard. Mm. It will pay off. Mm. They keep telling me that the civil rights movement is the reason that I am here and that I exist. Mm. They keep telling me that who I am, who I represent, who I love, are choices. Mm. Mm. They keep telling us we are nothing. When the truths are you and me, us are amazing, mm -hmm. beautiful, valuable parts of the universe. Sunra, thank you. Oh my God. This is proof that birds of a feather do flock together. I, like Brittany, will be reciting something that I did not write. Um, <laughs> but this is a poem that I had to memorize for my high school Spanish class. So the title, I believe, is The White Rose. I will not torture you with my Spanish, so I will read the, or I'll recite the translation. <laughs> um, I cultivate a white rose in July as in January for the sincere friend who gives me his hand frankly, and for the cruel person who tears out the heart with which I live. I cultivate neither nettles nor thorns. I cultivate a white rose. Ooh, can yeah. you say it in Spanish? Yeah. Can we get it in Spanish? Oh, boy. Yeah. <laughs> Cultivo la rosa blanca. En julio, como en enero, para, <coughs> para el amigo sincero que me da su mano franca. Y para el cruel que me arranca el corazón con que vivo, carga mi ortigo cultivo. Cultivo la rosa blanca. So, I hope you enjoyed the programming that you saw today when it comes to the center on Taj Grove. I had a really good time being able to check it out and see what they were all about. Uh, open mic performances were really cool and touching. It was a very intimate setting, as you can see. Uh, if you're interested in some of the Center on Cottage Grows programming, I'll drop a link in the description to their website if you're a local Chicagoan or plan on visiting sometime soon to check it out. Uh, if you haven't, drop a like on this video comment you know are you an lgbtq person within the community did you find this little documentary resourceful to you um and subscribe to my channel for more content it helps me out and i'll see you in the next one peace